So one thing I wanted to address is the issue of pronouns and, and calling people by their pronouns. Uh, you know, there, there are people like Ben Shapiro who, who will say being asked to refer to someone by their preferred pronouns is a concession to the belief or requires my belief that uh, biological sex isn't real. Like w- what I'm saying when I address a trans person by what they want to be called is that I believe the whole attendant ideology, uh, the trans activist ideology, which not even all trans people would necessarily agree with. Um, but like, you know, and, uh, it's, it's where it's always seemed to me, I'm, I'm happy to call someone what they want to be called. If, if, if I know that that's a way to make them feel comfortable in my presence and, to validate that I, you know, everything else held equal, I want them to feel freer around me and, and, and in the world. And if they want to talk about what we think about biological sex, well, then I'm going to be honest about what I believe in. But it's it just, it's always seemed to me needlessly rude to not call someone what they want to be called, even if, you know, even if it's as simple, you know, I, I, I would call you by a nickname if it, if it were important to you, right? Um, it, it gets a little tricky with they because it's so easy to forget. But still, it's like I'm I'm going to make an effort to be polite, and I, I'm I'm curious what you think of because that, that this is a point of tension uh, in, in the culture right now. So, what do you make of the the request or the demand of, of people to call you by preferred pronouns? So, I mean, it is a demand. Um, it's a demand I'm happy to accede to for someone that I know and I'm in the presence of. Because it's just too conflictual otherwise. I mean, to me, it's a bit like calling a Catholic priest father. You know, I don't believe, and I'm not going to tell him I believe. And if he says, you know, when did you last go to Mass? I'll say, God, that was a long time ago. And, you know, I don't believe any of it. I wouldn't start with that. And I wouldn't, like, pointedly keep saying Mr., you know? That would just seem bizarre. And um, when I've had friends who are trans with to stay in my house or things like that, of course, I use their preferred pronouns. If I wasn't going to, I wouldn't have invited them. I think. But the problem is that it's not just a courtesy, it's a truth claim now. And so when somebody says my pronouns are she, her, they're not asking you for a polite concession. They're saying I'm a woman. And that's not just a personal claim. It's a societal claim. It's it's something that fits them into public policy in a role that's fundamentally not correct, not not, not, um, objectively correct. So we live in a world where not much is sex separated anymore. And that's great. Like women aren't kept out of all the things they used to be kept out of. And, you know, there's men who were midwives and nurses and nursery nurses and things too. And that's great. But there are still some things where we do them separated by sex, like sport, like showering and open showers. Um, And those things, when somebody says my pronouns are she, her, what they mean is you've got to let me into the women's sports. You've got to let me into the women's changing rooms. And then I'm not okay. So I think when people say it's just a courtesy, they haven't thought through the implications of this wholesale insistence on a truth claim. And that's, and and I think I've probably become more hardline as a result because I see that ground was given needlessly or out of politeness or without, or thoughtlessly even. And now we have people calling rapists she because they want to be called she. And then they want to be in women's jails and they're being put into women's jails. So it was probably the, the, the thin end of the wedge there was the pronouns. Like you look at a person and you think you're suffering and, you know, like why would I mind if you change your name to, you know, Susie and say you're she, her? Like, that's fine. It's no skin off my nose. But if Susie, she, her is a rapist and says they want to be in a women's jail, yes, I mind very much. So it has to be that it's understood that this is a, a courtesy. This is not a truth claim. And that's the distinction I would make. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm struck by your religious analogy. Like I, I would, I would, you know, I would call someone reverend if they were a reverend without believing Christianity. And if they, if they insisted that they wanted to create a, a Christian state or enshrine Christianity in the law, well, then we'd have a conversation in which they would realize how much of an atheist I am, but and I wouldn't you might say you weren't willing to call them reverend anymore. If they kept pushing if they were changing laws so that it became illegal for you to express your atheism, 
at some point you might say, I'm sorry, I'm not going along with the Reverend stuff anymore. You right. Know, I'm, I'm wiping it all out. Right. But, but I would, I would always want really to preserve the distinction between you know, calling someone what they want to be called and taking on their, you know, even if, even if trans activists want to blur those lines, I would want to insist on keeping the bright line. I agree. And I had to decide in my book what I was going to do because I talk about a lot of trans people in the book, even though it's not exactly a book about trans people, there are particular cases and, you know, in particular historical ones. And I've been criticized from both sides on this. Um, it's an experience you may be familiar with. But you can't get it, you know, you can't, you can't do right for doing wrong sometimes. And there are plenty of women who feel that I made needless concessions by on occasion referring to trans women as she. And what I said to them is one of the things that I object to most in this movement is its totalitarian insistence on saying that the world is the way it wants the world to be, even the world self-evidently isn't that way. They're trying to make a new world. In, in this linguistic way, you know, that, you know, not only is this male person female, they have always been female. Not only can male people become female or be understood to be female and vice versa, that has always been the case. We just didn't realize it until half a second ago. So they're bringing their utopia into existence by language right. and then insisting all of us speak their language. And that's not how language and discourse works. So well, who would I be to say that my words can be forced out into the world and that everyone must hear them the way I want them heard. And the fact is that the people I wanted to read my book were people who are undecided, who think there's something weird going on here. And they think, gosh, I need to know more about this. There's something about this that's bothering me. I was very surprised when I saw there was a bloke in the women's Olympics uh, weightlifting. You know, what's going on? What's going on with the kids? What's going on with all this stuff? I wanted that person to read it. And if I had gone, he, 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 about trans women, that person wouldn't have read it and would have thought I was mean. So I have to accept the world that's out there as much as I'm insisting other people accept the world that's out there. And the world that's out there requires me to think, how do I speak to communicate? How do I get people to read my book and listen to what I'm saying and understand it? So for me, the bright line was that at no point in the book should somebody be confused about what sex somebody was. That said, I'm not going to go around the place needlessly misgendering people. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think the, you walk the line in, in, in the perfect way, which is to refer to someone as, as like a natal male and then thereafter as a woman, if it's, if it's relevant. Right. Yeah. Or I'll say trans woman mostly. A trans woman. That's woman. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'll say she, when I have to refer to them again, and that's fine. I'm not, I'm not about being mean to people. I don't mean to be rude. It's just, we've gone beyond politeness being enough here. You know, when we have children who are being put on medicalized pathways that lead to sterility, and when we have American governors putting rapists and murderers of women in women's shelters and women's prisons, the time for just being polite is long past. Mm 